How you doing? If you could uh, just do us a favor, start out by introducing yourself with your name, where you're fighting out of, and uh, team as well. All right, my name is Caitlin Neal. Um, I'm fighting out of Syndicate Martial Arts in Las Vegas, Nevada, and I also fight out of Agima Jiu-Jitsu in Utah. Fantastic, thank you. So talk to us about your uh, journey to getting here as a professional fighter. What started your passion in uh, martial arts? Yeah, so I grew up doing dance gymnastics and cheerleading. Um, I started fighting because I didn't make the college cheer team. I uh, wanted to stay competitive and do something, and I was thinking maybe bodybuilding or CrossFit. And then my friends took me to some MMA fights, and there was one girl fight on the card, and I was like, I'm going to do that. I mean, obviously the natural trends, you know, from, from cheerleading to fighting. I mean, did people say, like, you're crazy? Like, what are you, what are you, what are you talking about? Am I holding this funny? Oh, no, you're good. Okay. Or maybe it was. Okay, I thought it was me. I'm like, I don't know. Okay, um, yeah. So a lot of my friends are um, LDS, so they're Mormon, so they served a mission. So um, when they left on their missions, they knew me as a cheerleader. And then I guess there was a rumor going around the missions that uh, I became a fighter. And then so when they came back from their missions, um, they knew me as a fighter. And they're like, what the heck happened to her? Like, did she have some like crazy injury or did like she have an abusive boyfriend like what happened they didn't they couldn't quite understand or comprehend how i went from a cheerleader to a fighter but i just love to compete that's awesome so your first experience with martial arts you know you start training um did you know right away like i mean you saw it and you're like i can do this but then you go to do it are you like yes this is it or was it kind of a slow adjustment so there definitely was a learning curve because when i walked into a gym i didn't know what a jab was i didn't know what a cross was i had no idea what a double leg was like there was I was a clean slate when I walked in the gym, so I had to learn everything for the first time. I think the only time that really made me like question it was the first time I got punched in the face. I'm like, oh, do I really want to do this? And then I showed back up to the gym the next day and I continued. That's awesome. Uh, your, your pro career obviously started out a little rough with some, with some results. I guess, what kept you going at that point? I mean, were you, were you second guessing, like, am I doing the right thing? Yeah, I definitely was second guessing myself at that point. I went one in three in my first four fights and it was embarrassing. I'm like, well, what am I doing? This is so embarrassing. People already don't believe in me because I was a cheerleader. And so um, I definitely had to make some mental adjustments and focus more on aggression and believing in myself, believing in my skills, believing that I belonged there and believing that I was actually a professional athlete and I was a professional fighter. And so once those things started clicking a little bit more, um, I turned around and went four and one in my last five. So yeah, it definitely was an adjustment. That's awesome. So I was gonna say the, the key to your recent success, then you really just attribute to more of a, a, a mental attitude than any technique or strategy or anything along those lines? Yeah, I would always say I'm definitely a technical fighter. Um, even in my first four fights, I never went against a girl where I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so much weaker than this girl. She just completely outbeat me. Um, she was stronger than me, she was better. It was never that. It was more just like I held back for some weird reason I was holding back. Do you still feel the need to like prove yourself? Or like, do you think like going into the house with all these other, they're gonna like, oh, she's just a former cheerleader or whatever. Do you, do you think there's still any of that? Or do you think, you know, at this point, you know, almost 10 fights into your career, like you've proven it? Um, I definitely feel like I am more experienced than a lot of other girls in the house, but I do feel like I will have to prove myself and I have to, Improve my experience, um, improve that I'm the best in the house. <laughs> you you got to believe it when you say it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, tell me, the, the Ultimate Fighter, I mean, knowing that this wasn't like your lifelong passion, martial arts, or whatever, do, do, have you watched The Ultimate Fighter or had you watched any of it? Yeah, so I've watched a few seasons of The Ultimate Fighter, starting with uh, Ronda Rousey and Misha Tate. That's when I started to become a huge like fan of Misha Tate. Um, and then I watched mainly all of the women's seasons of The Ultimate Fighter. I did watch the last one because I had a couple um, friends on it. But yeah, I also just like love reality television. So I think it's, I think it's perfect. It's fighting and it's reality TV. Perfect. What does this opportunity mean to you then? I mean, does this feel like, I don't know, like the big breakout moment or does this feel like, you know, the big opportunity? What, what does it feel? This opportunity feels like it's my moment, it's the next step in my career to where I want to go. Um, I have followers on Instagram, I have followers on Facebook, I have followers on TikTok. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to um, fight. I want to prove to myself that I belong in the UFC. I'm trying to prove to um, 
myself that I can accomplish those high goals that I set for myself and um, really push through everything that I've been through to not give up now because I'm so close. I'm almost there. <laughs> That's awesome. I guess last thing for me, uh, for people that haven't, you know, followed your career maybe to this point, what, what do they expect, you know, what do you expect them to see from you, whether it be your fighting style or whether it be your personality, the reality television <laughs> side of things? Uh, what do you think fans are going to see from you this season? I mean, they can make a judgment on my personality of things that they'll see in the house. Um, I probably won't be that dramatic, but I might try to stir some stuff up. However, as far as fights goes, you're just going to see a cat fight. As a fellow uh, reality TV watcher, what are you most sad to be missing while you're in the house watching on TV? Are there any shows? Oh, The Bachelor, I am for sure. <laughs> it's in the middle of the season of The Bachelor, and now I'm not going to know who wins. And so that's kind of a bummer for me. I love watching The Bachelor. Awesome. You like shown as one of those drama queens that you often see on reality TV. Are you like, going to be doing everything thinking like, oh, shit, if I do this, it might look like that? I, yes, watching The Bachelor, I have no... Um, notice that there is like a villain or someone that they villainize. I don't think it's my personality to be that dramatic. I'm pretty chill unless somebody like really crosses me. And so if somebody does cross me, I'll stand up for myself. However, I, I don't see that it ever getting to that point. <laughs> is there anything you've learned from watching a reality show that you want to implement that you want to, you know, because there's people, there's all these like, like you said, there's formulas, there's the nice person, the, mm -hmm. you know, the villain. Is there something that you kind of want to be on this season? There's not really a character I want to play. I think I would, I'm not that good of an actor, so I just want to be myself, see how that goes, and hopefully people like it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.